80 sitcoms, so many sitcoms. What a comedy decade the 80s must have been. And here's even more 80s British sitcoms that you probably forgot about. Number one, Hardwick House, ITV 1987. With only seven episodes, this sitcom is likely to have been largely forgotten, especially due to the fact that when it aired, the last five of those seven episodes were put on hold, following a massive uproar from the public over the portrayals of some of the characters, like the alcoholic headmaster or the pervy teachers on staff. Sounds just like my old school, actually. I know you haven't got one, idiot. Why haven't you got one? Dinner, sir. Dinner, sir. Dinner, sir. You smell. Number two, Dream Stuffing, Channel 4, 1984. So many of you guys have mentioned this one, I just had to include it. So even though you might not have forgotten about it, I clearly did. Mo and Jude shared a council flat in a tower block in London, along with their cat, who is named Tripod, because he's only got three legs. The two women are on the dole and get up to all sorts of schemes trying to make money, often to the annoyance of their neighbours, Richard and Bill. Listen, Grandad, I'm holding me talent up here. Morning, Jude. You seen the cracks under this carpet? One of these days it's got to come right through with that climbing frame of his. Walking frame. <laughs> yeah, well. Number three, Wyatt's Watchdogs, BBC One, 1988. Neighbourhood Watch isn't anything to laugh about, and neither was this sitcom, unfortunately. Brian Wilde stars as Major John Wyatt, who takes up arms after his sister's house is robbed. He forms a bit of a dad's army of sorts, but their Neighbourhood Watch instead. Cue lots of misunderstandings and arguments in this short-lived comedy. I feel that the justice of this great country, which I had the honour to serve in the last great conflict will view my case fairly and without bias. After all, do we not have the best legal system in the world? Yes. <laughs> Number four, Split Ends, ITV 1989. Anita Dobson was in this, having been bumped off in EastEnders. It is, as you might assume from the title, a sitcom based around the life of a hairdresser. She's having a bit of a midlife crisis because she's soon to see her 40th birthday. She starts looking for love, whilst the rest of her staff just go around slinging one-liners at each other. Everything all right? Oh, Kath, can you tell me something? Why do men always have to act like men? I think it's in their hormones. <laughs> but pretty and empty-headed as they are, we still love them, don't we? Number five, Pig in the Middle, ITV, 1980-1983. A boring fart of a man and his boring fart of a wife are not exactly living the dream, since their relationship seems to be going a little bit stale. And when the husband, Bertie, meets Lisa Goddard at a dinner party, they of course begin an affair. What's the book? Mm -hmm. What's the book? Must be pretty jolly gripping. Gorbals, I've been doing it wrong all these years. What are you reading, the Kama Sutra? <laughs> Number six, Dog Food Dan and the Carmarthen Cowboy. Someone mentioned this to me quite a while ago and I thought they were joking, but no, it was a real series. BBC Two, 1988. The two main characters are truck drivers who deliver dog food up and down the country. They meet up at a truck stop and it turns out they deliver to each other's hometowns. So they give each other tips about where to meet women in their respective towns. They're both married, so it's another sitcom about having affairs. How very 80s. It's often referred to as Dan, Dan the dog food man. <laughs> well, let's go have our dinner together, shall we, Dan? Seems as we're both in the same line of produce. Number seven, Lame Ducks, BBC Two, 1984 to 1985. After being injured by a truck, Brian Drake, played by John Dutine, decides to live life off the grid and get away from everything and everyone. He is, however, soon joined by Angie, played by Lorraine Chase, Morris, an ex-postman, and Ansel, played by Brian Murphy. They all end up living together in a derelict railway station. How do I look? You're looking marvellous, Mr Drake. Ten years younger? I'd say fifteen. Oh. Nurse? Yes, Mr Goodman? The washroom water's cold. The washroom water is very hot, Mr Goodman. You could boil an egg in it. But I don't want to boil an egg. <laughs> 
Number 8, I Love It, BBC 2, 1989 to 1993. Just sneaking in there as an 80s sitcom. This one starred Norman Lovett, a.k.a. the computer from Red Dwarf. He plays himself in this, and he is an inventor who lives in his own version of reality with his talking dog. It's Lovett's crazy inventions that are the focus of most of the gags and silly situations in this one. Say hello, Dirt. No. <laughs> can be quite rude at times but it keeps me company and that's important when you live on your own you don't live on your own yes i do <laughs> what about me then number nine they came from somewhere else channel 4 1984 a small town is experiencing a rash of unfortunate events such as zombies taking over the local shops and severe headaches that make your head explode and one man believes that an odd radioactive briefcase might be the cause of it all Unfortunately, that man happens to have amnesia. My Olive swears by her electric. <laughs> it's got them ceramic ops. Oh, yeah, they're quite nice, those, aren't they? Oh, I bet I have a couple of dozen beef burgers, too. Oh, right. Uh, English or American? Oh, American, I think. They're more expensive, Wendy. Oh, yeah, but they're nicer, aren't they? Number 10, The Optimist, Channel 4, 1983 to 1985. N. Rytel stars in this odd addition to sitcom land. It basically shows one man's everyday life and the random things that seem to happen to him. It's very slapstick and it reminds me a lot of Sun Mothers Do Have Em, but without the dialogue. A seemingly normal guy getting caught up in ridiculous events for comedy value. The comedy ran for two series. It was first shown in 1983 on Channel 4. It's not been seen on our screens for nearly 40 years. Number 11, Kinvig, ITV 1981, a sci-fi comedy. Now there's a rarity. One night whilst taking the dog for a walk, Des Kinvig sees a flying saucer piloted by a scantily clad alien. This kicks off a very short-lived run of only seven episodes where we're never quite sure if Kinvig's encounter with the unknown are in his imagination or the real deal. And finally, number 12, Snakes and Ladders, Channel 4, 1989. Set in a dark and miserable future Britain, 1999 to be exact, there's a literal north-south divide between England and Scotland. It's a bit of a trading places scenario where Giles, posh chappy from Chipping Sodbury, due to a case of mistaken identity, has to swap places with poverty-stricken Gavin, who lives in a Glasgow slum. A strike. Exactly. You're a political. A strike. Oh, that word. No, it's, no, all it's all coming back. No, no, it's all Strikes. No. Occupation. Don't worry, Ken. Look. Yes. Here's, <laughs> look. Here's your dandy look. And there you have it. Even more 80 sitcoms that you probably forgot about. Any more suggestions for the list? You let me know in the comments. And please subscribe to the channel for more and share it with your friends and all that good stuff. Bye for now. Thank you.